authorized the port of Zeebrugge to sail yeah. 23rd yeah. April 1918. Both of the ferries were badly damaged by artillery and machine gun fire, but managed to escape and limp back to Dover. Because of their work, King George V allowed the vessels to use the word royal in their name, and after extensive refitting, they resumed their peacetime activities as the Royal Daffodil and the Royal Iris. You can now see the roll-off, roll-off ferry terminal called Twelve Keys, connecting the Wirral with Belfast. Twelve Keys. It is along this stretch of shoreline. This is on the other side.
and there was a club of respectable persons making bowls on the bowling green of the hotel. And there were children and infants riding on the donkeys that had plenty arrived. The hotel, to which Hawthorne refers, was the Royal Rock, a popular destination for ferry passengers who took a trip to Rock Ferry to enjoy a drink, a game of bowls, or a walk on the Esplanade. In the late 1930s, a layer of mud began to wash over the sandy beach, and in 1939, the ferry service was discontinued. The area gradually deteriorated, and the old pier was replaced by a jetty connected with the Tramia oil terminal, parts of which could still be seen. Oh, we're looking down that way. Further ahead, the large green area uh, is Port Sunlight River Park. Opened in 2014 and built on yeah. a former landfill site. Its many footpaths meander through wildflower meadows and trees, and there are stunning views over to Liverpool. Even further upriver are the eastern locks into the Manchester Ship Canal. Manchester, a city that was at the centre of the North's Industrial Revolution, was provided with a vital passage to the rest of the world when the canal was opened in 1894. It carried imports of raw cotton to the heart of the Lancashire cotton industry from 35 miles away. By 1955, the canal was carrying over 18 million tons of goods every year. Amongst the many ships that use the canal now are the Mersey ferries, operating day trips from Liverpool and Wirral to the historic Blanchford Rocks and back. The cruise gives passengers the opportunity to experience a round trip in the same day. The cruises operate on selected dates during the summer months. Please check the Mersey Ferries website for details.
Liverpool is synonymous with popular culture, especially music, sports and the arts. It's home to five theatres, including the Liverpool Playhouse, Britain's oldest repertory theatre. It is also the home of the Tree Racecourse, famous for the world's greatest steeplechase, the Grand National. And in recent years, the city has become popular with food companies looking for dramatic buildings and locations. Not surprising, because the Liverpool contains more than 2,500 listed buildings, more than any city apart from London. It has more public sculptures than any UK city aside from Westminster. And it has more Georgian buildings than Bath. facilities. To the left of this beautiful building known as the Three Graces, which together form one of the most majestic and famous waterfalls in the world. On the right is the port of Liverpool Lake in its impressive copper dome. Only in 1908, the design came from a rejected competition in the Anglican In the middle stands the Tunard building. Built in 1914, the building was designed in the style of a 16th century Italian palace and was once the offices of the famous shipping line owned by Samuel Cunard, who operated the first regular transatlantic lines between Liverpool and New York in 1840. Other famous shipping companies followed, such as the White Star Line, owned by the Titanic, and the Blue Star Line. The most magnificent lines built along the famous places London Street, which is the only view of the longest floating wow. land in the world. Yeah. It is in here that over 9 million elegants are still between 1830 and 1890, and their way to a new life of life. Finally, the beautiful Miser building, possessed by the Royal Miser Friendly Society in 1911, is perhaps Liverpool's best known landmark. Based on a Chicago waterfront skyscraper, the building is topped by the famous Spider-Birds, which stand nearly 6 metres high. They're said to be based on an eagle, which was the original suit of the King's Dog. However, when the seal was lost in the 18th century, the building was rebuilt in 1910. The artist's permission to design the new seal misinterpreted the eagle as a cormorant, hence their rather unusual appearance. Some say that the female live bird faces the river waiting for the sailors to come ashore, while the male is looking inland to see if the bugs are open. <laughs> They've never made it, so there are no other live birds in the world. And tradition has it that if they ever fly away, Liverpool will cease to exist. 